Greetings, I'm DK Ross. Now, welcome back to the TTT News. And we are working on bringing more conversations that interrogate how we as humans live in harmony with our environment after doing so much to live in disharmony. And Karen McDonald Gale, she's the acting CEO of Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. She joins us to look at the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and the People. Welcome, Karen. How are you? I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for making the time. I want to find out, though, what is the 30 by 30 campaign and the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People is a mouthful. Bring that down for me. <laughs> sure, no problem. So what, what it is, is a 30 by 30 target is a worldwide initiative for governments to designate 30% of their Earth's land and ocean, so land and water, to, for protected areas by 2030. So 30% 30 protected areas by the year 2030. And there are two major aspects to this coalition, which is where you start hearing about the HAC, as we call it, the High Ambition Coalition. France and the government of Costa Rica have led on the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People. And their central goal has been to focus on this 30 by 30 goal. They are also working closely with the United Kingdom led Global Ocean Alliance, which focuses specifically on the conservation of marine biodiversity and resources. So in the Caribbean and with the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, we were very associated with a 20 by 20 goal. And it just was logical for us to, to continue the visioning with these groups towards a 30 by 30 achievement. Now, is one thing, and thank you for that overview, but is one thing sure. to hear, okay, well, there's this a uh, great idea and it started and when you hear about places like costa rica because they i think they have uh a, a name they've made a name for themselves in terms of like the things that they do that are green that are organic that look and to build that but what kind of involvement is there in the caribbean and i want to ask how does caribbean Di biodiversity fund to kind of play into that to support this involvement from caribbean or, or regional territories sure yes everybody knows costa rica for pura vida their life live they live their life with this idea of of being green and being involved in what everything being very sustainable for them and in fact i was there recently it's amazing the mindset of the people the mindset of the leadership uh, in the Caribbean, we're, we're getting there. I think there is more and more of an approach. We at the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund have been working on making sure that there is funding available for these ideas and these concepts. And our, our aim is for sustainable funding, perpetual funding for conservation ideas in the countries of the Caribbean. Right now we have 12 sub accounts, for example, that are working through national level conservation trust funds in 12 countries in the Caribbean to think about and make sure that the ideas that are coming across are national level ideas on conservation. Um, we are also working in, in those countries and others on ideas for ecosystem-based adaptation to climate change. So we really are trying to think about not only within the CBF, but with partners in the region, the idea of what it means for us to do this, this conservation and sustainable development that we have talked about for a long time. And it's important for, for us um, in the Caribbean to understand the value that and the role that we play in, in being a part of this bigger picture. For the 20 by 20 goal where we were initially, the Caribbean was a leader and a champion at getting 20% of countries in the region at protect, at, with marine protected areas by 2020. And now we continue that work with being a part of this bigger vision of the global and planetary 30 by 30 goal that we're working towards. And it's really important that we understand the role that the Caribbean should play to make sure that the protection of our species, the things that we think are important to us, are, are being defended by our own voices and, and by our own people as we move forward. So it's, I think it's a big goal. And of course, the Caribbean is a biodiversity hotspot. More and more, I was with two ministers today having a similar discussion that we are large ocean states, not small island states, that we are large ocean states and we must be proud of that and make sure we, we are recognized 
for our blue economy um, and, and paid and, and made sure that it is actively um, used in what we are putting forward as our economic goals and strategies. And I really like that juxtaposition of the large ocean state versus the small island state. But the fact yep. of the matter, the truth or the, the reality we live in, these states have different sets of policymakers, people at the helms, who may have things that are slightly higher or slightly lower on their individual hierarchies or totem poles. So many times, What's in it for me is the question that is right. asked. So what are some of the benefits? And then conversely, what are some of the things that we stand to lose or lose in greater detail if we are not uh, about this 30 by 30 campaign? Well, luckily this is easy because I was able to have a discussion just earlier today with two ministers from across the region, Grenada and Jamaica, who I asked that exact question of. And they were very, very, adamant on the role that the Caribbean must play in making our voices heard, but also in speaking as one. It is my work with the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund, as, as well as the work they do at these conferences, is, is, can be siloed, can be about operating on their own. And it is so important that we understand the value of, of putting together our voices to understand and, and explain to donors, to funders, and to partners what the needs are for, for the large ocean states that we are working with. I think in terms of the benefits, the idea of properly accounting for the environmental services, both on land and at sea, that blue economy and green economy terms that you're hearing more and more are becoming very real and turning into what we, we are calling blue and, and green jobs that are really considering factors of sustainability. And, and as we know by nature of the term sustainability, it is what will help us to continue on a way forward. Other paths are not going to get us as far down the road as, as sustainability. Indeed, as we consider some of the conflict issues that are happening now, we are so dependent on fuels, on things that are coming from far away that we are not in control over. And it, is, it really is up to us in the region to figure out how we account for the value that we have in terms of our environmental um, assets, as well as make sure that we are able to do what we can and remain resilient to be able to recover after major events, for example, in a way that, that is, is quick and, and um, accounts and is, has accounted for the costs that would be involved. So more and more it is about us making sure that we can do in the region all that we can to, to preserve what we have and recover quickly with, with assets that are within our reach. And that is something that I want to uh, resume conversation with when we return from this break. We are speaking with Karen McDonald Gale, a CEO of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. Stay with us, we return with more. <music> Welcome back. We are going in depth on the work of Hack 30 by 30. We're doing so with Karen McDonald Gale, the CEO of Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. And Karen, I'm looking at that image behind you, and I'm not sure if it's forest or if it's wetland in terms of like mangrove. And this makes me remember that not necessarily all things or solutions are created equal in terms of looking at how we can store things like carbon. And, but the thing is, not everyone knows. So what role does information and information dissemination have in an initiative of this scope? It's so important. It's, it's important on a number of levels. In the end, as much as we, and we know this across the board, there are one or two people signing the final document. But the pressure that is put on these people to sign the document comes from us, from the, the, the people, the masses, those are, who are more involved. And the 30 by 30 goal is one that is totally based on science. It is based on research and all that we've been researching in the region and globally in terms of protected area management and best practices. So we, we think it's really important that 
it is not seen as just another goal that we're trying to reach, that we've really done our research as to what's important in terms of reaching these goals, learned from things like the, the 20 by 20 goal, the Caribbean Challenge Initiative out of which CBF was born, to this new um, approach of 30 by 30, which is global, by, by it's meant to be global, it's meant to be something that we work on together as, an, as a planet towards protection of our most vulnerable species, our most vulnerable people. It is also very people-based. It is not only about the animals and the plants, it's about how people work with the animals and the plants. And it is really aimed at trying to come to a, a, a conclusion. And indeed, one of the interviews I did recently we mentioned that we have done 20 by 20 at the national level. We'll do 30 by 30 at the global level because we're not sure that 40 by 40 is in any way um, something we can work towards. So we have our target set for us. And how important is it that the persons who are signing those pieces of paper adequately represent the totality of experiences? I say that because sometimes, like you said, those people signing that piece of paper, they may be siloed, they may be in specific places, but in terms of getting a seat at the table to say, well, this is what the science says, this is what the research shows, and we cannot afford to say, okay, well, you're signing a document that benefits you mm -hmm. and it will do some work, but okay. while the grass is growing, the cow is starving and the people in this large ocean state see the effects in a manner that's not necessarily most ideal. I, I think it's important. Um, I also think it's important that that foundation is there. So in the end, um, the reality is they are the ones who are signing and, and can only take in so much information. But it is, it is for me, the reason I can defend something like this is the foundation is there under this, the person signing that says that we have done the research to think through what can be done in the countries in terms of reaching the targets and the goals. And indeed, we have talked to both the developing and developed countries you will see in the, the, the website for the Caribbean 30by30.org information about funding that will be available to make sure that what we are saying, we are going to be able to do. Again, it is an ambitious target as we did with 20 by 20. The aim is to work in all ways towards it and, and really hope that as a, a planet, we are looking at reaching it. We have worked with um, a number of the developed countries and we have promises from them for up to $60 billion in support. It will be continuing on some of the work we're already doing at the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund with national conservation trust funds and with partners in terms of ecosystem-based, nature-based solutions to climate change to make sure that we're really trying to make the difference that we want to see. And in a way that is that demonstrates Caribbean involvement in the process. Now you just gave a website, Caribbean30by30.org, I believe. And, and what, what is that by like? Is it BY? Because I also want to X. know yes. X or BY. Caribbean30x, common X, 30.org. Thank you so much. Because it, lend, it, it leads into the question, where do people get the information about the research, about the data that is there, and about the potential for funding? So if I know that this solution has been approved, has been approved for this sort of funding, and I'm thinking about a career, possibly that's something that I might want to go into. So in terms of, are there other places that people can get that information? Yeah, so I think the information on the 30x30, <laughs> sounds weird, but the 30x30.org is specifically about the signing and, and getting us to the joint vision of the 30 by 30 goal. There's other information, our website, CaribbeanBiodiversityFund.org, very long, but CBF dot was already taken. So CaribbeanBiodiversityFund.org tells you a lot more about the work that we are doing in terms of climate change. We will soon be doing work in terms of circular economy. And we are also doing work, as I said, with these national conservation trust funds. So you will see more information there. And I welcome the visits from the, your viewers. And in terms of that potential as well, uh, are there time frames? You know, you said you want to have these resources coming back by in terms of like fishing that fit that has fishing grounds that have been depleted. What are some of the other things that you're looking at in terms of like those increments and timelines? 
So that's always a very, very hard question to answer. I think the best answer is, as we do with the work that we do with the, the national level trust funds, we leave a lot to the countries to decide what is best for their countries and for their situations. In all cases, it is about preservation. In some cases, it's, for example, it doesn't mean no fishing. It may mean fishing only lionfish for a Jamaican scenario where we want to get rid of the lionfish. So fishing lionfish is great. Fishing other fish, we would like it to stop. So there, it's going to be specific to the various countries and indeed the time frame that we work within each of the countries varies as well, which is why we speak more about the protection levels. We think that if you have the protection in place and the protection delegation that you want to have, it is de designated a protected area, you then have the room to do the various types of protections that you need to do for the various countries. And I think we also want to emphasize that it is going to vary. In some cases, it will be don't touch anything. There's an area, Jamaica is my point of reference for most things. There's an area where we have um, the only population of our iguana in Jamaica. We're at a no touch situation there. But there are other, other places where we have um, a little more room for discussion of development, working with the people who live in the area um, to figure out the best way that we work together for the development, as well as the preservation and conservation goals that we're working towards. So it really is sustainable livelihoods, as well as conservation and finding that balance that we would like to find for each. So that time frame really is hard to pinpoint. Protection is the, the aim and that delegation of protection is really what we're hoping to, to be able to declare. But in terms of those individual timelines and reference points, I guess it also ties into behavior change because if we, if yeah. looking at your reference point of Jamaica, Go in Hellshire Beach, and people are not necessarily used to eating lion fish. So this is no that that's that's what killing people and what what you want me to eat. You mean I'm that? No, <laughs> sir. It, so in terms of like getting that information out, saying okay, well, if you remove these spines and it's safe to eat, and there's this campaign right. that is moving towards changing hearts and minds. Uh, I wanted to speak to that in addition to any closing statements in this uh, last minute and a half thoughts. Sure. I think the best thing to say is we all know the passion of Caribbean people in many respects, <laughs> including when we feel we want to have something done our way. And so it's important that we consider that in anything, any work that I am doing, a big fact and a big discussion point has to be the social aspects. We did it when we were discussing elimination of plastics. We, we will have to do it when we're discussing any other behavior change. But I don't think it's impossible. And the key to it is to making sure that we're talking to and not about or around the people who will be genuinely impacted by the changes. It is hard. It's, all, it's even harder by those signing, as we discussed before, those at the top who are signing some of the documents, but it is, it is not impossible. And I think a lot of the work that we continue to do includes that social factor and has to include social considerations and the people and the residents of the area. So I am, I, I'm Caribbean, I'm West Indian. I, I think we will find a way of figuring out. We came from culturally spaces where environmental factors were part of our history and part of our background. We have mothers who have the, pla the plastic bags in the, in the long, the, the able to be reused and the foil papers able to be reused. So we know about what some of the right things to do are. We just need to remember them and remind ourselves of them in some of what we're doing going forward. And we want to thank you so much, Karen McDonald Gale, CEO of the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund. And we want to thank you on behalf of the TTT News team for tuning in. This has been In Depth with me, DK Rosta. Thank you for joining us.